Hi everyone, Dr. Eric Westman here with another episode of Dr. Westman Reacts. Be sure to get my free guide, 10 Tips to Start Keto Right. In the description below, there's more information. So I was sent a video, you're going to become insulin resistant on a keto diet. And it's an interview with Dr. Brett Osborne by BPI Sports caught my attention and other people's attention because in general you're thought uh, you're taught that insulin resistant is insulin resistance is bad for you it's it's a precursor to type 2 diabetes and and that's true so if it was true that a keto diet caused insulin resistance that w that would be a bad thing so it caught several people's eyes and um first thing we need to be clear about is what is insulin resistant and, and how is it measured? So unfortunately, it can be measured in many different ways and doesn't really mean the same thing when it's measured in different ways. And so there's not one test that means you're insulin sensitive, which is the opposite of insulin resistant. So you can get an idea if you are insulin resistant by a blood glucose level, a blood sugar level, and a blood insulin level, ideally at the same time. And uh, even more detailed, you can get a, a glucose, toler glucose and insulin tolerance test where you take a um, measured amount of glucose and then the, uh, go to the lab where they check your blood and, for glucose and insulin at periods, at usually every half hour for out to three to five hours after ingesting that carbohydrate. And what it does is it will show you the blood glucose elevation and then the insulin response because insulin goes up because the body doesn't like an elevated glucose. Well, that's the way I will describe it. <laughs> so insulin is sent out to lower the, the glucose. And if your insulin it has to go really, really high to keep the blood glucose down. That's called insulin resistance, meaning the insulin doesn't have the same effect as it did before. So if you're insulin sensitive, your glucose goes up and you don't need much insulin and it'll come right back down. As you progress toward prediabetes and diabetes, type 2 diabetes, that is, your body's insulin doesn't work the same way. Your body is resistant to the insulin. And so you need more and more insulin to have that same effect on the blood glucose. And then eventually, the body is unable to keep the glucose down to where it was before. So you have type 2 diabetes with a high insulin level. And that just is another reminder that you don't want to treat type 2 diabetes if your insulin's already high with insulin. You want to use lifestyle or some other medication besides insulin because insulin, you're already resistant to it. <laughs> well, back, back to the video. So just to, uh, so my understanding of what happens on a low carb keto diet is your glucose will, will normalize, come down, and then your insulin will also come down and there's really no insulin resistance Let's see what they say in this video. But when it comes to insulin sensitivity, one of the downsides, potential downsides of a ketogenic diet is developing issues with insulin sensitivity. Right, even, Potentially. Though, that's, right, even though that's paradoxical. People think, oh, you're going to be very, very in insulin sensitive because... It's, it's counterintuitive, right? Right, you're going to be very, very insulin sensitive because all your insulin receptors are going to be upregulated because there's no insulin floating around. So your body is really, really sensitive to it. When in actuality, what ends up happening is, is that um, your body sort of loses the ability to even utilize insulin because you're not using glucose as an energy source, if you will. You are, but you're not. It's you're, gotten lazy. It, it's gotten lazy. Because it hasn't, hasn't had to work. Uh, time out. <laughs> um, I, I like the general approach. Although they're coming in and also uh, already with a bias that there's a problem. Um, the description by Dr. Osborne is almost cor fully correct. So your body never reduces its insulin secretion on a keto diet to zero. There always is some insulin. So I believe the real role of insulin and many other experts in the keto community, the real role of insulin is to help facilitate amino acid 
getting into the cells because that's what it does as well. So when you're not eating carbohydrates, your insulin is actually being secreted in response to protein, which contains amino acids. And so you're able to secrete insulin. It never goes to zero, even on a keto diet. So I'm, I'm sensing that there's kind of this all or nothing thinking going on here, which is so common in the um, unnuanced world of, of uh, thinking these days sometimes. So uh, the body never, your pancreas can secrete insulin. Now it, it might take a little bit of time uh, so that the, the um, if longer you go without carbohydrates, they mentioned the term that your pancreas becomes lazy. Well, if you're not eating carbohydrates, you don't need to develop and make insulin and keep it stored. In fact, it becomes more efficient. And then in response to eating carbohydrates again, it may take, I don't know, a few days or three days. I haven't done the experiment because I don't want you to eat carbohydrates to, to try to see how long it takes for you to control your blood glucose again. But that's essentially what they're saying is that the, the pancreas becomes lazy and will never be able to help you with eating carbohydrates, but I don't want you to eat carbohydrates. So, um, but that, that's the classic idea of that we have to have carbohydrate and, um, but remember, you always are insulin uh, secreting to help with the protein processing in your body. Not, it's not just for carbohydrates. So back to the video. Hasn't, hasn't had to work. Correct. It's gotten lazy. However, so you may see a little bit of a bump in your hemoglobin A1C, right? So your long-term measure of blood glucose control may actually go up slightly when you're on a ketogenic diet. And you go, uh-oh. Meanwhile, you've shed 40 pounds of body fat right? Your inflammatory markers are down. But what's the, the real barometer of whether or not you are doing something good for your body? Because you think, oh, my hemoglobin A1C is going to go up. That's bad for my body, right? That means I can't really process blood sugar really, well, really, really well, and I'm less insulin sensitive. Check a fasting insulin level. That's the difference. It very, I, I like his approach. So, um, the hemoglobin A1C is a measure of your three months of blood sugar. So you can check your blood glucose with a finger prick or, or a, a continuous glucose monitor now, and you see the ups and downs. The A1C is a uh, test that averages out that blood glucose over three months, but you have to understand how the test is done. The hemoglobin A1C, if you've heard the term hemoglobin it actually hemoglobin is a molecule that carries oxygen around the body it has nothing to do with diabetes but so because glucose uh, the level of glucose can get into the red blood cell freely and increase uh, the amount of glucose on this hemoglobin molecule that has been used as a measure of the three months of glucose that you have um, it's kind of like the integrative, integrated uh, uh, derivative under the curve, integration of all of that. Uh, but that means that if, if you have a very high glucose over for a while and then very low, or th uh, the same level like this, you might have the same A1C. So it doesn't tell you how often it's high. And then the other thing that I think is going to end up explaining this, uh, there's, it's not very common, but especially if you're doing a carnivore diet, the hemoglobin A1C measurement, which is this the glucose on the hemoglobin, it really isn't measuring your blood glucose, okay? It's the hemoglobin getting glommed onto by sugar. It's dependent upon how long that red blood cell lives or how the, the turnover of your bl red blood cells. So if your body is more efficient and you are having red blood cells live longer, then your A1C is going to be higher. Conversely, if your red blood cells don't live very long, that you're turning over the red blood cells, your A1C will be falsely low compared to what your glucose is. So the A1C has some um, uh, error in, in not in the the um, the percent of it, it, it's in the how it's calculated. It, it really isn't measuring your blood glucose levels like this. It's measuring the amount of glucose on this red blood cell that gets turned over. And uh, I hope one day 
you know, if I had all the money and, and research capabilities, I would see how long the red blood cells last on people you, eating a keto diet, or even for that matter, how about uh, if you can find uh, research in, in cats and dogs or other pure carnivores to see how long the red blood cell is or how long the A1, what level the A1C is, that's going to be a better uh, uh, thing to compare to than the A1C of people who eat carbohydrates because the turnover of the red blood cells may be different. There are other factors in, in that measurement that also might be at play. But so the, the couple things so far, the, the body, the pancreas will secrete insulin. It might, it might be, you know, a little slow at first if you're going to eat carbs again, but my answer to that is don't eat carbs again. Uh, and uh, the other is that this measurement may not be accurate may not be mean the same thing in the context of not eating carbohydrates. And, and that's a hard concept for most doctors who are just looking at this level and, and not really, but you know, when does a doctor ask you what you eat anymore? You know, <laughs> I focus on that every visit, but, um, the, the, it may be, you could call it like a new normal or, or just it's uh, apples and oranges. And, and so the A1C might be a little elevated, but your blood glucose is actually in the normal range. Um, so, uh, back to the video. So does that make sense? Yeah. That's the big thing. That's why yeah. you can't get tricked. Yeah. Insulin will be really why low. Why is it going up? So, so, what, so, what, what, right. so what about that in, in a carb cycling? So what they're saying is if you, um, measure your insulin level and it's low, you don't have insulin resistance. So the, what Dr. Osborne was saying is that you can, you know, go back and forth, you have insulin resistance or not, you can debate about it. But if you check the insulin, remember insulin goes up to keep the blood glucose down. It, it, and if the insulin has to go way up, that means you're, you're resistant to the insulin. So if the insulin is low, then you don't have insulin resistance and that's spot on. I mean, so, um, so it's kind of a, um, hard, uh, interview to unpack unless you're knowing exactly what insulin resistance is and what the A1C is, but, um, I'm not worried about what they're talking about, which is the phenomenon that your pancreas doesn't make insulin as fast because you haven't had to have it around. It's more efficient. So it's not putting resources into making insulin and having it be at the ready. So, you know, just in case you're eating carbs, it, it's going to take it, I don't know, a day or two. I don't think anyone has done the exact research on it, but your body will your pancreas will figure out how to make insulin again, but I don't want you to eat those carbs at the level where you're going to need that insulin like that. So I'm going to reshape the, uh, 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 the conclusion here that it's, it's not a bad thing. It, you, it's not insulin resistance. It's your, your body's just going to have to react and get acclimated back to eating the carbs again, which I don't want you to do in the first place. So hope that's helpful. Uh, you know, be sure to get my free guide below if you haven't already. 10 tips to start keto right. The link is in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And check out adapterlifeacademy.com.